Yes, uh, first and foremost, New Mexico's personal income started to rise immediately following the Richardson tax cuts of 2003. 2003, as I recall, was quite a good year for New Mexico's economy. New Mexico had remained at 47th nationwide. Uh, thank God for Mississippi and uh, Alabama type thing. And boom, suddenly the tax cuts passed and we slowly rose by about a position place each year. Now we're at 42nd. It's not the mountaintop, but you know we can get there if we do some of the reductions and efficiencies that we're talking about. And first, another thing I want to talk about is Carter made a statement that $900 billion million is a fifth of the budget or something like that. That is not the whole budget. The whole budget includes vast quantities of federal funds that are used in New Mexico, whether it's stimulus money, pass-throughs for Medicaid or anything else. It's really close to $14 billion annually that we totally spend here in the state of New Mexico. So $900 million when you're talking about all the stimulus money that came through this state, it's not as bad as they're saying. And according to the Federal Federation of Tax Administrators, not an ideological group whatsoever, New Mexico <laughs> ranks 10th in the country in taxes as a percentage of personal income. So we are not some low, poor state that can't afford anything. We are spending money, we're spending money at a relatively high rate compared to lots of other states. And I want to address Texas. Sure, Texas has a budget deficit. I think every state just about has a, te has a budget deficit. But they'll solve their budget deficit. They've created 80% of all the jobs that have been created in this country since the recession started. They'll solve their problem. They'll continue to grow. They have lower unemployment than we do. I would trade places with them in a heartbeat. And there's an elephant in the room that no one's really talked about, gross receipts tax. We can talk about lowering the personal income tax, and that's an important tax. It went from 8.2 to 4.9, for those who don't remember. But New Mexico has a very unique gross receipts tax. It's not a sales tax. It taxes business inputs. When you go to the doctor, you pay a deductible, you're taxed. Until they pass the food uh, grocery tax, which is a very controversial issue, we actually agree with Voices for Children on that for different reasons, but that was bad policy when Richardson did that. The grocery tax we have right now is a carve-out on the gross receipts tax. So we need to look carefully when we're talking about raising taxes within the GRT and cutting exemptions. We're, the, the gross receipts tax, though, is a major impediment to economic growth because it, it taxes those inputs. It makes manufacturing extremely difficult in the state of New Mexico for that reason. Also, and this is national data, but New Mexico is in line with the rest of the nation by and large in terms of this trend. This is the trend, and you can clearly see it's going downwards, of student-teacher ratios since 1990, from 1990 to 2007. It's going from above 17 and a half students per teacher to 15.6 or 7. This is nationwide, but I don't think New Mexico is too far out of line. And I think this is the most important, actually, perhaps of the entire evening, showing dramatic increase in spending nationwide on education versus the pitiful results that we see nationwide on a variety of tests, science, reading, math, we're not getting the results. Until we enact reforms, even more kind of uh, progressive, if you will, than what Governor Martinez is proposing in education and adopting the Florida model, we will continue to have 45% of our budget uh, thrown down a very inefficient rat hole, which is a public education bureaucracy that's not working. Thank you.